Hi, this is Edmund, and this is my video explaining Zachary's Karate Club. And so this is uh, this was split up between me and Robert, and so I'm mainly going to be going over what exactly the Karate Club is, how the origins of the data set, and also just like the methodology that was used to eventually process the data. So. Imagine that you are part of a karate club, and you have a sensei and you have an owner. And so in this karate club, everyone is friends, everyone interacts with each other, but people will naturally have their various friend groups. But one day, the owner of the karate club and the sensei of the karate club, they have a conflict. And so now your karate club is no longer one cohesive unit. This causes the owner and the sensei to split, and what happened afterwards was that uh, some students would follow the sensei and other students would follow the owner, or they would find a new sensei altogether, or they would just quit completely. And so, now that you've taken yourself and imagined what this Karate Club scenario is, we can see that this is an actual real-world data set that was studied by someone named Zachary over a period of three years. And so this was a university karate club that included 34 members. And so there are multiple visualizations for this. For example, you can see here that there are 34 nodes, which if you want to know more about what those are and the, the concepts of a graph, you should watch either Pooja or Will's video. And so you can see here that you can see the relationships between these groups and one in 34 represent the owner and the sensei because they naturally will have the most amounts of relationships, which is why you can see the most amount of edges going out from them and to them. Another way you can visualize this would be like this, because obviously it isn't always in a circle, so it might be easier to differentiate between wh where someone went. For example, if someone would be colored red, then that means that they went with the owner, or if someone is colored blue, then they went with the sensei. This is represented because you can see that the 1 and the 34, which are the, which are the sensei and owner respectively, you can see that those are in the center of those big quote-unquote clusters. Note that this is different than the clusters that we did before, but it's a good way of thinking about it. And so, eventually, this data set, you can, what happens is that Zachary created an array of the relationships between different people. For example, if you just, uh, you can have 2 comma 1, which means that's a relationship between node 2 and node 1. Or you can have 9 comma 3, which is the relationship between 9 and 3 that you can see right over there. So, and so, based on based on the knowledge of how people are related to each other, how people interact with each other both inside and outside of the karate club, you can then just you can then ascertain ascertain who went with who using network analysis and making those predictions. And so what we did is that we followed the tutorial to figure out the programming aspects of all of this to see how we could make any predictions. Robert will go into more details about that. Uh, but eventually we got as far as being able to draw a graph that looks similar to what the one you see on screen right now. And so ultimately what we learned is that we learned a lot about how to apply uh, different libraries such as sklearn, networks, and matplotlib, which, are, which we've noticed are used in basically every single programming thing. And so in the future, hopefully we'll use, we'll try to learn more about these different libraries so that we can actually apply them on our own maybe without having to follow a tutorial and the next steps would be to actually understand the math that goes into it so that we could actually create predictions in the future however now that we actually have a grounded base we can see how this real world example can apply the conceptual elements and give us real world information um, if there are any questions, feel free to either ask me in person or shoot me an email, and I hope that was helpful.